Okay, hi. Uh, so we're going to continue what we started and uh, trying to uh, find an easy way to construct uh, the shear moment diagram and the bending moment diagram uh, from a given uh, force distribution uh, on the beam. Obviously, before, you know, we have applied forces and uh, moments, but um, the beam is usually supported at two points or sometimes more than two points and uh, then we need to find the reactions before we actually build uh, the shear uh, force diagram and the bending moment diagram. So let me just give you an example and we'll follow that. This is the simplest possible example and uh, then uh, uh, we'll follow it up with another example that uh, is, uh, has a different flavor. So the first example here is uh, we have uh, a beam and the beam is um, uh, supported, uh, at, uh, simply supported, and the simple support is on uh, both sides of, of the beam, as you can see here. Um, so on this beam, we have only concentrated forces, so we have two concentrated forces. Uh, the forces are 200 pounds here, and then 100 pound here and the distances are four inches from this side and then we have 10 uh, up to this point uh, and then we wanted to uh, find the, the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram so if we look at this uh, we need first uh, to find the, the reactions and the reactions I have R1 and R2 I want to find those uh, simply I take the moments about uh, if I have this point A and this point B, if I take the moments about point A and set this equal to zero, moments about B set this equal to zero, then it will give me the reactions R1 and R2. Uh, it's also obvious that since 200 and is closer to R1, then R1 is going to be larger than R2, and in fact, R1 is going to be, when we solve it, we have 210 pounds and R2 uh, is going to turn out to be negative 90 pounds. So if I want to now to make the uh, shear force diagram for example then um, I have a straight line uh, like this uh, let me just take that back As, let me say uh, I have a straight line just uh, make it uh, here uh, in the bottom uh, that's uh, representing the x-axis and then I start building the shear force diagram from that end. So I have uh, positive 210 because if we just cut the uh, beam at this point then the right side is going to go down with respect to the left side. So it have a positive value uh, up to uh, this point where we have now uh, to introduce the load which is downward for 200, 200 uh, pounds. So the positive value is 210 uh, on the left side and then it goes down by 200 up to, and then it continues on at 10 and then it goes down by another 100 and then it goes all the way to the end and goes up again um, by uh, the value of 90. So the shear force diagram is going to be uh, 210 on this side, 10 minus 90 and it continues on. So if you look at it uh, as kind of a, in a di diagrammatic way, then you will have, you go up 210, uh, and then you go down 200, and then you go down 100 at the concentrated load, and you go up again at the concentrated load with the value of the reaction of uh, 90. So that's kind of, I went through this uh, in uh, uh, detail so I can show you how I would think about it going from the left side of the beam to the right side of the beam. And once I have the shear force diagram I just multiply forces times distances to start building the uh, moment diagram. Or if you look at it if you have uh, the moment is the area under the curve so since the shear force is the integration of the uh, load 
then the moment is another integration of the shear, which means the area under the, the, uh, the diagram. So if you look at it, then uh, we need actually to find the area under this piece, and the area under this piece, and the area under this piece. And uh, uh, the, uh, since the, uh, the shear is constant, then the moment is going to be linear. So we'll have a straight line uh, connection between the different points. So I'm going a little bit uh, faster on this because we are familiar with it, but it's just refreshing our memory how to do it. Uh, then let's actually look at the solution. So the solution here is, uh, this is what we have gone through in the shear force diagram. And uh, then uh, we have the bending moment diagram is, uh, uh, is uh, we start at zero because it's uh, a free point. It's free to rotate at this point, the support and uh, the moment increases linearly up to 840 and this value 840 is exactly the area of this rectangle which is 210 times 4 and uh, then at that point we add now from this point to this point we add the area of this small strip which is 10 times 6 uh, 6 inch is the distance here so 10 times 6 is 60 60 plus uh, 840, it gets up to 900 uh, pound force. And uh, then since this is a negative area, negative area, it subtracts, and therefore it goes down linearly. Uh, hopefully, if we did things right, the area, the negative area, is going to balance the two positive areas because the moment uh, on the right-hand side uh, decays to zero as it is a simple support. So this is the way that it would work. Um, and uh, then we need to look at another example. So the other example that we have is going to be uh, a little bit more complicated. And uh, it's going to be on uh, the uh, uh, like similar problem to what we have in which we have power transmission with two pulleys and uh, the uh, belts are actually aligned on two different planes so we would have a combination of moments that are acting on two different planes so i will uh, uh, pursue this uh, 